welcome back. We're here with uh, Officer Jordan Spencer. He's one of our training officers here at the police department. We're here at uh, Nebraska, Christ Nebraska Christian College. They're gracious enough to let us use their facility for, our, uh, for this month's training. Um, once again, this is Officer Jordan Spencer. I don't know if you guys remember him from one of the previous vlogs. Uh, he was one of the uh, rifle shooters or the, the, the shooters in the patrol rifle course. I'll link it someplace up here. So check that out if you haven't uh, seen it already. So uh, Jordan, appreciate you doing this, brother. Yeah, no problem, man. Uh, tell us about yourself and uh, what we're doing here today. Yeah, so Jordan Spencer, I've been with the department for about nine years now. Um, fill up. Currently, I'm in the training coordinator role. So I set up trainings, conduct monthly training, um, our annual firearms, quals, everything else, keep up track of that, and then also help out with the local Sarpy Douglas Law, Law Enforcement Academy, helping assist with different trainings there. Uh, my main wheelhouse, I basically stick to the more tactical side of stuff. I'm a handgun instructor, red dot handgun instructor, uh, policing by mountain bike, tac med, uh, patrol tactics, on and on. Did four years with South Metro SWAT, um, so just kind of try to bring that experience and training to the rest of the department and the other agencies in the metro. Cool. And uh, one of the unique things about uh, Bellevue PD, which Jordan will actually touch on, is our training. Um, we're huge into training and just, um, we've actually quadrupled our training this last year. So uh, you want to talk a little bit about just our training philosophy and yes. program? Yeah. So. Like Officer Manning said, in the last year, uh, we have exponentially increased training. Uh, we have different topics each month that we're getting the entire department through. Uh, this month, we're focusing on basic CQB, basically room clearing tactics, uh, and then open air movement and high risk environment. So unfortunately, we don't have to look too far back in Bellevue's history to see um, that pretty terrible things can happen. So we want to make sure our officers are equipped for when those things happen again, uh, so they're not having to improv on the fly in super high risk environments. Uh, the other part, the second half of today, is covering what we call REACT teams. Basically, uh, just when small groups of officers get to a structure, get to a residence, and find out that the call has gone completely sideways, um, and we're bringing in either a SWAT team or negotiators or more advanced equipment, we still want those initial responding officers to be able to make good sound decisions in case the suspect surrenders, in case we need to go into a house, in case we need to use less, less lethal. So we've been incorporating that into training. Uh, our pepper ball guns that we have, our canines, tasers, OC, all those options, being able to let people utilize them basically for real against actors, give them uh, a good experience before they have to use it for real in the field. Yeah. Hey, can you put the gun down for me so we can at least talk? Okay. Jim, if you keep walking towards me, okay. you're going to get tased. Hey, King Ice, send that dog the wrong way. This, this block of training, we came in uh, at the beginning of the day, just reviewed our basic CQB. We follow the high threat CQB methodology. Uh, basically, focuses on minimizing officers' exposures while still maximizing their decision-making abilities. So we're keeping ourselves safe and allowing us to make good decisions based on what we are processing within rooms. From that, after we hit the basics, we moved on into more uh, high-speed applications of CQB. We call it basically like hostage rescue, active threat response. If you can think of like when you see police running towards an active shooter, uh, typically we don't see what happens when they get into the building. Uh, so we've been drilling that with our officers too, how to quickly and efficiently move through buildings while still maximizing cover uh, and closing distance on our bad guy. Then uh, the second half of the day, Again, covering react team scenarios. So we've got actors, uh, we've got canine Come out with your hands up, Jim. 
uh, people who are certified on our pepper ball gun that come to these scenes, they don't know what the drill is going to be or the scenario is going to be. Um, and then our training staff has scripted out scenarios so they're all the same for the, every group. And then each group gets to put their experience to work uh, and try to come up with a multitude of solutions for various problems that these scenarios can bring up. What's been really cool about this, we don't often have canine deployments. At least some of our newer officers haven't seen canines get deployed. Today we'll be deploying canines, letting them see what it looks like when a dog's on bite, when a dog is uh, apprehending a suspect, and then how police can most safely approach people that are have a, a canine around them. Uh, also seeing pepper ball guns get shot, experiencing that, seeing the effects of that. Uh, it's really good before we have to use that in the field on somebody. We talk about bounding and bounding overwatch. If you were in the military, you've done this a hundred times, um, but we have officers that really don't understand the concepts behind that. So we wanted to make sure that when we are approaching these high risk environments, whether it's rounds coming towards us or the potential of an armed suspect somewhere where we need to close distance with, that we're giving our officers ways to communicate and plan to cross open air environments using no. utilizing cover and uh, still maximizing their ability to communicate and process information downrange. I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. As always, make sure you like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell so when we upload new content, uh, you get notified of that. So, um, Officer Spencer, do you have anything else for the good of the people? Yeah, so one of the things, some of you guys are probably looking at, do I want to be a Bellevue police officer? Not only do we have this internal training that we do each month, but our department has been really good on sending people to paid trainings that they find on their own or our department puts out. Um, I've gone to Alabama for a patrol tactics instructor training. Uh, I've gone to 88 Tactical for a lot of really good paid trainings. And the department's been good about getting us ammo, getting us a budget to allow us to get that high level training. Uh, we've got people that go to interdiction, criminal, uh, patrol tactic schools all the time. So it's really nice. We hear some departments uh, that don't send their people out to training or get stingy with the budget. We are very uh, pro training, yeah, pro sure. advancement in our department. It's a really good benefit of coming yeah. to work here. And huge shout out to uh, Chief Clary for um, providing that training budget and taking such a big focus and putting such a huge emphasis on training. So. Again, make sure you like, share, subscribe, and we'll catch you guys on the next one.